move for hours. No wonder. They cut these cars off on the side. Look out. Here they come. Nothing. Honest, we didn't. You're kind of young to be hopping freights. We was just on our way to a ranch. You better come along with me. Take them up with you, boys. Gabby? Oh, I want to talk to you. It's seven months since you paid a nickel on that loan. Just how long do you expect me to carry you? Not very long, I guess. Well, I'm glad you understand that. I'm a banker, and with me, business is business. I should never have given you the money in the first place. Well, $25,000 is a lot of money. You knew it at the time. And about all I've gotten back so far are a lot of promises. Well, the bank doesn't work that way. I'm serving notice on you, Gabby, that if you don't get your payments up, you're going to lose your ranch. Here's a written notice to that effect. All right, darling. I'll, I'll see what I can do about it. Excuse me, Dolly. Remember what I told you. Don't you know it's against the law to hop a ride on a freight train? You ever been in jail? No, no sir. I won't do you any good to lie. Oh, hello, Gabby. What happened, Jim? You just caught these kids jumping off a boxcar. Where are you boys from? Texas. What do your folks know about this? We ain't got no folks. That's what they all say. I'm going to... Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. Every boy is entitled to half a chance. They don't look like bad kids to me. I know. I know. There aren't any bad boys. But as far as I'm concerned... What good is it going to do to lock them up like a couple of horse thieves? Give them a chance. Well... Uh, how about me taking them out to my ranch? I'd be responsible for them. I don't know, Gabby. Maybe they're running away from something. Well, if they are, they'll be right where you can find them. Haven't you got enough stray kids running around there? Look, they're good boys. All of them. It's doing them more good there than traipsing around the country and ending up in jail. How about it, Jim? All right, Gabby. But I want you to keep an eye on them until I find out if they're wanted. Sure, sure. How would you like to come out to my ranch, boy? Oh, swell, mister. Well, what are we waiting for? Here, take this. Thanks, Jim. Oh, uh, we're having graduation out there this week. Why don't you come out? Roy Rogers is going to be there. You mean the guy that sings on the radio? Gee! the singing cowboy, and the sons of the pioneers. And now, since this is Roy's final broadcast in the series, I'd like to call him back to the mic for a farewell word. Roy, would you like to tell our listening audience something about your plans? Yes, John. The boys and I are going out to a ranch called the Half a Chance. 
It's owned by an old friend of mine, Gabby Whitaker. Oh, isn't that the place you were telling me about? Where they give young boys a definite start in life. That's right, John. And Gabby's sure doing a fine job of it. You know, I'm an old alumnus of the ranch myself. I'm going out and pay back my debt to Gabby, the best friend a homeless boy ever had. Finucane, what happened? Somebody tried to kill Clarence and me, and I wouldn't put it past any one of you. But we were only trying to help. Help? Those infernal brats from Gabby's ranch. I saw them at the side of the road when they tried to blow us off. I saw them, too. They're nasty. I hate them. Well, they wouldn't do anything like that. Oh, they wouldn't do it, eh? Well, they all belong in a reform school, and I'll never know what kept you out of one. Get up. She's looking well, isn't she? <laughs> Guess that about ends the actual graduation. All except the uh, speech making. I, uh... It's Roy Rogers! of a gun. How you been, Gabby? Fine, just fine. I don't remember what I told you, boys. Come on, line up. Four straight lines there. No, no, get in there. Straighten it up. Come on, four straight lines. Straight. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's a place for every guy who is all alone and blue. And you know that do or die. Do or die. Ruth, help Gabby all to see you through. So you needn't have a doubt. Cause a welcome man is always out at half a chance ranch. Half a chance ranch. Half a year old half a chance ranch. Fellas, say, we brought along some presents for you. Maybe you better start tearing into them. You didn't have to do that, Roy. <laughs> well, sure looks like home, Gabby. Yep. Reminds me of old times. <laughs> uh, did you mean what you said about you and the pioneers staying here? Sure. You're getting a little too old for this business of mothering a flock of kids. I ain't either. Never felt better or younger in my life. All right, all right. Take it easy. Could use a little financial assistance. You in trouble? Up to my neck. Bank's calling in my loan about a week. The whole 25000 Well, that's a little bit out of my league, Gabby. With taxes being what they are today. Mine too. But if I don't get it summers, them kids ain't going to have no place to live. 25000 well, we'll figure out something, Gabby. I hope so. Say, I see you still have Chip with you. Yep. How's he behaving himself? Better than the last time you was here. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. He's still a little might hard to handle, but he'll be all right. Fine. Uh-oh. Gabby! Gabby Whitaker! Here comes trouble. Hello, Dolly. What's the matter? Did you fall down? I want to talk to you. All right, come on in. You too, Roy. You might just well hear the word. Look at little fancy pants. Yeah, let's give them the business. Okay, you stay here until I get around behind the surrey. told me not to talk to you boys, and I agree with her perfectly. You don't say. I feel that you are completely beneath my notice. Did you say beneath? Yes. That's what I thought you ah! I heard about the two boys the sheriff caught jumping out of the freight car. I suppose you'll deny having them right here on the ranch. I ain't denying it at all. They're here and they're going to stay here as long as they need a home. They're nothing but a lot of little criminals. Uh, and when the bank closes this ranch, I'll see to it myself that they're put where they belong. Well, what's wrong with Gabby's ranch, Miss Panookin? He's giving them a home. He's teaching them how to be a credit to the community. Somebody's got to do that for them, and somebody's got to... We have institutions for homeless boys. Oh, don't give me that reform school stuff again. Them kids ain't done nothing. All they need is a, a decent start in life. And Gabby's certainly given them that. I don't care to discuss it any further. The bank demands full payment on your note in one week. I sure wish I could help you, Gabby. Oh, it ain't your problem, Roy. I got myself into this. Gabby! Now what? Gabby! Gabby, where is her? You come right here. Now what's the matter? Look what those things of yours have done to my Clarence. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, ain't he a sight. I won't forget this. I guess Clarence won't another. They sure messed him up, didn't they? Just one of the horses. 
horses, I guess. Hey, Joe! Where's Gabby? Where's Gabby? Where's Gabby? In the house. Why? What's the matter? King Blaine's in the barn. We just King saw him. King Blaine? How do you know it's King Blaine? Seen his picture. Sure, he's a killer, and they're going to hang him when they catch him. One more crack like that, and they'll give you a bust in the nose. But, Chip, everybody knows that. Sure. sure. Everybody knows that. Kill more men than... Wait a minute. What's going on here anyway? Chip, what did Gabby tell you about fighting? Yeah, I know. We was talking about King Blaine. He's out in the barn. King Blaine? You sure? Yeah, positive. We saw him. They said it was a killer. They said that they was... All right, Chip. It's all right. You boys better go and get washed up. Lunch is almost ready. Come on, hurry up. You too, Chip. Forget about it, will you? Go on. Coming in. All right, Rogers. I got my hands up. Hello, King. It's been a long time. What about Rogers? I'll get on those windows. You can drop your hands now, Roy. What good's this going to do you, King? Why don't you give yourself up? You underestimate me. What are you doing here, anyway? I was just passing through, and I thought I'd stop and see Chip. Why don't you leave him alone? Now, don't get excited. I only want to see him for a minute. That's all he needs, just to talk to you for a minute, and he'll be right back where he started. I'm a bad influence, eh? Well, I can't argue that one. I guess maybe I owe Gabby something for taking care of him. He wouldn't touch a nickel of your kind of money. What he's trying to do for Chip, he's doing for him, not you. I heard the ranch was kind of on the rocks financially. I could help him out. I told you... Forget what... it. Where is Chip? He's getting ready for lunch. Look, King, why don't you give the kid a chance? The sheriff's going to catch up with you one of these days. Ten to one, he never does. I'll take that bet. You're on. I'll get Chip in here. I want to talk to him. I wish you wouldn't, King. He's coming along fine. Gabby's doing a swell job with He's him. my kid. Go get him. We'll be watching you at the window. Pop. Oh. Pop. Hiya, kid. Uh, you've sure grown. Oh, gee, I'm glad to see you, Pop. You're glad to see me, eh? That's what the sheriff told me the last time I saw him. Bart. Take him outside and keep him covered. Well, uh, gee, Pop, why'd you happen to come over here? The sheriff was after me, so I had to duck in here. Uh, the sheriff? Yeah. I killed a bank guard. Didn't you hear about it? What's the matter? Don't they let you read the papers around here? Your old man's been getting himself a lot of headlines. For doing what? Killing people. Robbing banks. No. Yeah, I'm getting to be as famous as Jesse James. Well, I should. I've been at it long enough. I've got a lot of guys up to now. You should have seen that bank guard staring at me like he was still alive. Does it scare you? No, you're just saying that to keep me here. Well, I won't stay, see? I want to go with That's you. That's the laugh, that is. All I need is a kid tagging onto my heels. What do you think I dumped you here for in the first place? I got things to do, Chip. Wait, King, the sheriff just rode in. Well, look, kid. You know those packages I've been sending you by mail? Yeah, I did just what you told me. I didn't open them. Where'd you put them? Yeah, I'll show you. Blaine, we've got to move out of here fast. All right, never mind now. I'll be back. Let's go. Come on, Chip. Let's go see the sheriff. Sheriff, who are you chasing this time? King Blaine. We almost caught up with him a couple of miles out of town. Seen anything of your father lately, Chip? Well, how could he see him when you're chasing him all over the country? You better run and get your lunch, Chip. Yes, sir. Well, they were here, weren't they, Roy? Yes, Sheriff. They just beat it over the hill. Thanks. We'll get them. I'll come along with you. Fine. 
Come on, boys. Howdy, Jake. Hello, Gabby. Just come over to tell you we got Blaine. What happened? Well, one of the boys shot him. We took him up to the old barstow ranch. He wants to see you, says it's important. Well, how bad is he? Well, I think he's dying. I'll go right over with you. shot in the head. Gabby, I, I want you to take care of Chip for me. Sure, sure. Don't you worry nothing. I, I'd like to give you something to help out with your ranch. Oh, I can't take anything. It's all right. It's clean money. It's, it's a garage in Kansas City. I'm giving it to you. Sell it and get yourself in the clear. But it ought to go to Chip, not to me. I've taken care of Chip, all right. <laughs> and his sister, too. His sister? Yeah. She works at the, the Golden Spur Club in Kansas City. Get this to her for me. She... <laughs> we'll take care of everything. Thanks. Tell Chip... Could have been a great guy, Gabby. Tried to be just now. How are we going to tell Chip? Well, I think we ought to let it go for a while. What's it say? To Edward Thornton, attorney at law. Upon my death, I leave to Gabby Whitaker the property owned by me in Kansas City, known as the Peerless Garage, on 8th Street and Willow Avenue. It is to be sold by Gabby, and the money used to pay off his debt on the Half a Chance Ranch signed King Blaine. You think I ought to take it? Well, Gabby, for once in his life, he was trying to do something decent. I guess even a wrong guy like Blaine has that privilege before he checks out. Maybe you're right. Let me handle this for you, Gabby. I'd sure appreciate it. I'd kind of like to see Kansas City again anyway. Yeah. The garage was completely destroyed by fire. How is it there was no fire insurance? As a matter of fact, Mr. Rogers, there was no insurance of any kind. You realize the sort of life this King Blaine led. I handled his affairs here in Kansas City, and I hadn't heard from him in over three years. He apparently didn't even know his property had burned down. Were there any other assets? Uh, nothing. From what you tell me, he died much as he had lived. No friends, no money, no estate. Well, anyway, thanks a lot for your trouble, Mr. Thornton. I'm sorry you had to make the long trip for nothing. It's too bad, too bad. The bad part about it is breaking the news to Gabby. Oh, uh, by the way, is there a night spot here in Kansas City called the uh, Golden Spur? Uh, the Golden Spur? I should say there is. Matter of fact, I often get a night off, and uh, it's on 12th Street. <laughs> Just come up and participate. And that means to sing a song with me. Why, who can say? Perhaps you'll be a hit. So when you're caught, just come up and do your bit. Because you're it. Look who 
cowboy rope this time. A real cowboy. Look, cowboy, now that you're here, would you sing a song with me? Do you know, did you ever get that feeling in the moonlight? Sure. Fine. All right, boys. Did you ever get that feeling in the moonlight? That wonderful feeling that you want to be kissed? Come on. You're strolling in the park. The star's so bright above. You'd love to love somebody, but there's nobody there to love. Did you ever get that longing on a June night? That wonderful longing you can never resist. Did you ever get that feeling in the moonlight? That feeling that says you want to be kissed. Did you ever get that feeling in the moonlight? That wonderful feeling that you want to be kissed. Just strolling in the park. The stars so bright above. You'd love to love somebody, but there's nobody there to love. Did you ever get that longing on a June night? That wonderful longing you can never resist. Did you ever get that feeling in the moonlight? That feeling that says you want to be kissed. In the moonlight. That feeling that says you want to be kissed on a June night. That feeling that says you want to be kissed. Thank you very much, cowboy. All I can say is you certainly know your way around the song, doesn't he? <laughs> well, thank you, and same to you. Thank you. And now for being such a good sport, the Golden Spur is presenting you with six tickets to our local riding emporium, which I'm sure you can use. Well, thanks a lot. I have something here for you, too. All right, everybody, let's dance. You're Mr. Rogers? Yes. Do you mind if I join you? Not at all. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You knew King Blaine? Yes. We were brought up in the same town. Your father was... My stepfather. Oh, I didn't know. The first time I knew he had a daughter was when he gave me that letter. You knew he was killed. Yes. I read about it in the papers. Was uh, Chip his real son? When King Blaine's first wife died, he married my mother. I see. Then uh, Chip is your half-brother. Yes. Do you know where Chip is? Yes. He's out at Gabby Whitaker's Half a Chance Ranch. I haven't seen Chip since he was three years old. I never knew exactly what his father had done with him. Did your father... Did Blaine ever tell you anything about Chip? Told me to get in touch with him. And I think I'd better. After all, being brought up by friends of King Blaine's isn't my idea of a healthy environment for a child. I don't think you understand. He couldn't be in better hands. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Why don't you go out to the half a chance and see for yourself? I'd like to. Where is that ranch? It's in Lodestone, Arizona. I'm going back tomorrow. I don't suppose you can get away that soon. Oh, tomorrow? I'm afraid not. I'm a working girl, remember? Oh, come out when you can. I will. And thanks for your trouble. Well, not at all. There he is. Yeah. Well, hello, Chip. Hello. Who are you? You remember us. We've got news about your father. Oh, my father? Well, is he all right? Sure, sure, kid. He's fine. He wants to see you. Well, where is he? You know where the old Barstow Ranch is? Sure. You think you can sneak over there tonight without anybody seeing you? It's a cinch. You know your father would be in a lot of trouble. Don't worry. I'll be careful. Good. We'll see you there a little later tonight, then, huh? Yeah, right. All right. 
Oh, once I was riding the Circle Bar X. I met with a cowboy who called himself Tex. He was over six feet and as straight as a rule. And I later found out that his name was O'Toole. Michael O'Leary O'Brien O'Toole was the toughest of cowboys, the fightingest fool. He wore leather breeches and rode a white mule. Michael O'Leary O'Brien O'Toole. No guns did he carry when trouble arose. His fist he would bury in anyone's nose. He could turn around twice and lay him out cool. They all looked alike to Cowboy O'Toole. Michael O'Leary O'Brien O'Toole was the toughest of cowboys, the fighting the fool. He wore leather breeches and rode a white mule. Michael O'Leary O'Brien O'Toole. What's the idea of putting out all the lights? Well, you see, we can't take any chances. Come on inside. Where's Pop? Well, that's what we wanted to talk to you about. Here, sit down. It's like this, Chip. We didn't want to tell you this afternoon because of all those other kids being around. Tell me what? Well, I suppose you've got to know sooner or later. Chip, your old man's dead. Who did it? It was Gabby Whitaker. He killed your father. Gabby? That's why they didn't tell you. They got him cornered and Gabby shot him. Gabby. We were with him when he died and he asked us to get hold of you. What did he say? Well, he told us about some money he had stashed away and said you were the only one who knew where it was hidden. You see, kid, part of that money belongs to us. So if you'll tell us where it is, why, we'll give you your half. It was your old man's share. I don't believe you. He didn't say that. He just tried to get his money. Now, look, Chip, we were your father's friend. Believe me, we wouldn't lie to you. I don't know anything about any money. Now, listen to me, you're a little monster. You don't know where that money is and you're going to tell us. I tell you, I don't. Start talking if you know what's good for you. Let me out of here! Chip, you want to get hurt? I will work on him. Oh, wait a minute. Let him think it over for a while. We got all night. Get the depot on time? Yeah, he wasn't quite awake, but he was there to meet me. I ain't been up so early since Trigger was born. <laughs> How about Kansas City? Sell the property? I'm sorry, Gabby, but I'm afraid we're going to have to get that money someplace else. Well, what happened? Well, Blaine's garage burnt down some time ago. Your inheritance went up in smoke. Didn't he have any insurance? No, there was nothing left. How do you like that? Sure, sorry, I had to go all the way to Kansas City. Well, that's all right, Gabby. Oh, uh, how about Chip's sister? Did you see her? Yes, she'll probably be out here any day now. Where is Chip? Oh, I suppose he's having breakfast. Oh, Stevie. 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 Yes, sir? Have you seen Chip? No, sir. None of us have. He acted kind of funny yesterday to talk to those two men in the field. What two men? I don't know who they were. Well, what they look like, Stevie? Well, one was kind of tall with a mustache. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. One of the horses gone out of the stable. Run along, Stevie. Did you tell Chip about his father? No, I was going to get around to it, but I... Well, I think we'd better go look for him. Get the boy, Shug. Coming up. Sheriff, 
seen anything of Chip? No, we're looking for Plains men. I wonder if they'd be suckers enough to go back to the Barstow Ranch. Well, let's find out. Sheriff and these men from the hill. They're riding this way. Here, you get in the closet and keep your mouth shut. Well, what are you gonna do? Get out! Give me a gun! Don't look like there's anybody in there. We'll find out. off like clay pigeons. Oh, no, they won't. Get that kid out of the closet. Come on. What's going to do? Shut up. Everybody hold your fire. Here. Well, what's the matter with you? He killed my father. And they told me. Who told you a thing like that? I don't know who told you, but Gabby didn't have anything to do with it. I'm sorry about your father, Chip. But the sheriff did it, not Gabby. I don't believe you. I don't believe anybody. I'll prove it to you when we get back to the ranch. Take it easy, kid. I think you and I better go back to the ranch and have a good long talk. Come on. Well, looks like we got company. Gabby Whittaker. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Oh, Chip, this is your sister. My what? Hello, Chip. I'll have Charlie fix up a room for you. Thank you. Well, can't we sit down? Well, I didn't know I had a sister. Didn't your father ever tell you about me? No. We were separated when you were about three years old. I'm awfully glad to see you, Chip. I tried to find you for a long time. Pop knew where I was. Well, he probably did, but I haven't seen your father for some time. 
Chip, I have something here I want you to read. It's from your father. He wrote it just before he died. Dear Claire, your brother Chip is at the Half a Chance Ranch in Lodestone, Arizona. Get in touch with him and tell him I want you two to divide everything I have left. It will take care of both of you. Goodbye. King Blaine. What did he mean? Uh, I don't know. Did he leave anything with you? No. Maybe he just imagined it, Chip, before he died. Maybe. Excuse me. How did you two get along? Not too well. I don't think I made a very big hit with him. Well, you couldn't expect him to open up right away. After all, he's never seen you before. Yes, I know, but he... It's been pretty tough not having a mother or father around, or a sister. I understand. And especially since his whole environment has been against him. Why don't you change your clothes and go riding with me? All right. Back, Let her rip. The next event will be Bob Judd from Half a Chance Ranch proving a wild, ferocious cow. Are you ready, Brown Judd? I've been ready for eight minutes. recognize him from the Golden Spur. Must be one of your stooges. One of my best. Picks up cues just like a human. <laughs> <clears throat> Will you be my darling, my only one? Will you be my darling? It might be fun. You've got the love rock in your heart. I've got a heart that's just your size. Darling, I think you might. Will you be my darling? Let's start tonight. Could, Could you learn, learn to love me as I love you? Will you be my darling and make my dreams come true? Will you be my darling? You're mighty cute. Well, will you be my darling? But what a snoop. You're just the sweetest thing I vow, yes you are. But you grow up to be a cow. Me. Will you be my darling and hold me tight? Will you be my darling and start tonight? Could, Could you learn to love me as I love you? Will you be my darling and make my dreams come true? 
Just a minute. He's all yours, boy. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I certainly enjoyed that ride, Roy. I knew you would. You know, I'm beginning to see what you had in mind. You had sort of a wrong idea about all of us out here, didn't you? Well... <laughs> Don't you think Gabby's done a fine job with those boys? Yes, I do. Say, you must be getting hungry. I certainly am after that ride. Well, Charlie, is lunch about ready? Coming up, Mr. Raja. Right away. Fine. Roy, do you remember the letter you gave me in the club at Kansas City? Mm-hmm. I wish you'd read it. Okay. Did you show this to Chip? Yes. He says he doesn't know anything about it. Well, maybe King Blaine had put away some of that money he stole and wanted you and Chip to have it. But why would he tell me to get in touch with my brother when Chip doesn't know a thing about it? I don't know. You like kittens, don't you, Claire? Yes, I'm very fond of them. We have one in the barn we want to give to you. Just to show you there's no hard feelings. Come on, we'll show him to you. Well... All right. Oh, sirree, there's nothing like a nice little kitten. No, sirree. Well, how do you like him? He's beautiful. You mean you really give him to me? Sure. Well, they don't tell your grandmother. You go back to Surrey and we'll put him in a box for you. Before she misses you. All right. Lion kid. Your father told us all about it before he died. Now you're gonna get your share. You got nothing to worry about. Look, I told you before, I don't believe you. Where's that money? Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop that! Leave him alone or I'll... Stay where you are, Debbie. I'm taking Chip out of here. Morning, you. Listen, Chip. Good morning. Let's get out of here. He'll be all right. Just keep him in bed for a few days. Well, that's fine, Doc. Is there anything special that I could do? Well, there's nothing to worry about. Have this filled, and I'll call back again tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Oh, hello, Chip. How is he? He's come along fine. Can I see him? Well, not right now. 
Uh, Chip, is there anything important? I just wanted to tell him how sorry I am. If it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have gotten hurt. I think he understands. But I want to tell him I'm sorry. I don't know why he even lets me stay here. Well, this is your home, Chip. Gabby's very fond of you. We're all fond of you. When he gets better, why don't you tell him what you just told me? I think it'll make him very happy. I'll tell him. I heard he was going to lose this place to the bank. Well, where did you hear that? I just heard it. How much do they want? A little more than Gabby has right at the moment. About $25,000. It's a lot of money. It sure is. But don't you worry about it, Chip. We'll figure out something. I hope so. Gosh. Miss Finucane. Good morning, young man. What's on your mind? The Half a Chance Ranch. Well, what about it? I have something here that might interest you. Read it. Right there. It is unlawful to bring any action for the eviction of minors who have no visible means of support and who, without the assistance of a guardian, will become public charges of the state. Hmm. Well? You really can't foreclose. As a matter of fact, the money has already been paid. Paid? Who paid it? Gabby. And I don't understand where he got $25,000 all of a sudden. When did all this happen? Someone left the money at my house last night, but I don't know who it was. Well, that's strange. Gabby didn't say anything about it. Strange? It's very strange indeed. Ah, nice going, fellas. You're doing a fine job. Thanks. Hi, Roy. Oh, Chip. Hi, Roy. Can I talk to you a minute? Well, sure. What's up? You know, Chip, a funny thing happened last night. That money Gabby owed the bank was paid off. Well, what do you know? You paid it, didn't you, Chip? Yes, sir. With your father's money? What difference does it make? It's paid. That was an awfully nice thing for you to do, Chip, but Gabby won't settle for that kind of money. Why does he have to know where the money's coming from? <laughs> 25000 is quite a sum. He'd naturally have to know. Besides, it was stolen money. How much more have you got? About 35000 I guess. Where is it? Come on, Chip, where is it? I hid it under the floor of that stall over there. Well, I guess it's as safe there as any other place. Now, look, Chip, I've got to do a lot of thinking. Don't say a word about this to Gabby or anybody else. Well, of course I won't, Roy. I'll see you later. Bisbee. Bisbee. Say, what goes with you up at this time of night? Looking up the train service in Bisbee. Bisbee? Yeah. What are you going to do over there? I'm going over to see old Pop Collins. I'm leaving right after the Halloween party tomorrow night. He helped me before, remember? He's helped you a lot of times, remember? Well, can't do no harm. Might not do any good either. 
Have you heard from him since the time? Since the time I wired him I was dead? Yeah, and he sent you $500 to bury you with. Yeah. <laughs> sure made him mad, didn't it? It sure did. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't want to be in your boots. Oh, no, you bet. <laughs> Bisbee, Bisbee. I was going to send you an invite, but I didn't think you'd come. We're not here for any party. I should say not. Gabby Whitaker, you're a bigger fool than I thought. What have I done now? That money you paid me. What are you talking about? Oh, you know perfectly well. 
I checked the serial numbers, and it's the money that was stolen right out of my own bank. Of all the nerve. I didn't pay you no money. I suppose a little bird dropped the $25,000 on my porch and signed your name to the note. Somebody's crazy around here, and it ain't me. Do you deny your own signature? You're darn tootin' I do. Well, then who put that money there? Gabby doesn't know anything about this. How do you know? In the first place, everybody knows that King Blaine stole the money from the bank. Gabby wouldn't be fool enough to try to pay you with it. And who did it, Roy? I did. Why, you little thief. That's not true. He was only trying to help Gabby. The fact remains, it is stolen money. But Chip didn't steal it. His father simply left the money with him. Get the rest of it, Chip. Yes, sir. If you knew about this, why didn't you say something? I wanted to wait till after the kids had their party. They've been looking forward to it for a long time. You should have told me, Roy. I was going to tell you in the morning, Gabby. Here it is. Thanks. Chip says it's about 35000 All right, everybody, reach! Help! Help! I've been waiting for this for a long time. Thanks. Fanookin can't do this to me. What's going on here? You shut up, Gabby. I'll do the talking. Out of the goodness of my heart and a lot of explanation from Mr. Rogers here, I've decided that you should be rewarded for the return of that money. That's right, Gabby. And we couldn't think of a nicer reward than having your place done over. The only trouble was you got back too soon. We wanted to surprise you. You mean... You mean you ain't gonna throw us out? No. And I think you and I can tear up the note on that loan. Uh, uh, say, Thursday evening at, at my house? Hmm. I'll be there, Dolly. It's worth a sacrifice. 
Boys, how about three cheers for Miss Panookin? Hooray! 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 Well, thank you. Roy, seeing how that you're a graduate of this here outfit, suppose you start us off with a little song. All right, Gabby. Oh, round, 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 round,